Namaste everyone and welcome to the second Anchor the Light meditation for Monday. So before we start, let's ask for a blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father and Mother, to all the spiritual teachers, Holy Masters, Saints, Archangels, Holy Angels, spiritual helpers, helpers you can pray to whoever you like. To my beloved teacher, Grandmaster Tawakok Sui, Mahagu Jimiling, we thank you for Divine Light, thank you for your wisdom, thank you for your healing energy, guidance, help and protection. We thank you in full faith. And so it is. All right, so... I have another story for you, and this is um, another Zen story. I've just been reading them, and I find it interesting. So if you don't mind, I'll just share them with you. And so there's this uh, Zen master, <clears throat> and um, he has a crystal goblet, you know, like a nice real cup that a student gave him. And so every time he has visitors, he would show them, hey, this is a beautiful crystal cup goblet that uh, one of the students gave me. And so every morning... He'll pour his tea, and he'll drink from it. Oh, good tea. And then he'll go, hmm, this cup is already broken. Right? He puts it down and go about his day. So every single day, that's what he do. He'll enjoy the tea, and he'll look at it and go, oh, this cup is already broken. It's just bizarre, right? Think about it. You know, he enjoys it and go, this cup is broken, but it's in perfect shape. And one day... You know, he had some visitors come by and one clumsy dude somehow kicked it over or hit the table, whatever. It broke and shattered to hundreds of pieces. He looked at it, he goes, he looked at the visitors who came in for teaching. He goes, okay, let us begin the lesson. And he starts sweeping it to the side, sat down and taught. <laughs> you guys are going, huh? <laughs> All right. There are many facets to this story. If you really meditate on it, number one, this gratitude. You know, it's a cup. But the fact that one of these students uh, had so much love and respect for him, gave it to him as a, as a gift, he was very grateful. And so he enjoyed it. He says, hey. And every time somebody comes in, he would say, hey, this is a nice cup that somebody gave me. You know, just to show gratitude. And that's, I think, for me, that's one of the first lessons. You know, we take it for granted. We have stuff, you know, a cup. Come on, a cup. But then again, you know, it's given to you out of love, out of respect. So we should be grateful for the things that we're blessed with. So one is gratitude. Another one is he knows how to appreciate the little things in life. You know, he's not sitting in the Ritz Carlton Hotel. He's not drinking expensive stuff. It's just tea, you know, water with a few leaves and powder, whatever the heck it is. He sits there, enjoys it. Hmm. Right? Think about it. We live so busy lives, we forget to be grateful and to appreciate the little things that we're blessed with. So that's lesson number two. At least for me. I mean, this is my, in my own limited perception of how this, the lessons from this story. The third thing is the ability to attach and deattach. In other words, that's a nice goblet. That's a nice crystal thingy. You know, I enjoy my tea. But he always reminds himself, this cup is already broken. In other words, as nice as it is, as much as I enjoyed it, everything we can touch is impermanent. You go, well, you know, you're not really showing appreciation. You know I mean? You're so negative. Yeah, hold your horses. It's as simple as this. And the way the Lord Buddha taught it is what? The cause of all suffering is attachment. But if you've been with us long enough, I remember my teacher, Grandmaster Sokok Sui, explained it for, uh, in further detail. It's not that attachment is bad. That's not the cause of suffering. Because if I want to drink water from this thing, I have to attach to it, enjoy it. But when I'm done with it, I let go. The suffering comes from holding on to it mm, and then letting go of the cup. Now, not letting go of that cup could be a metaphor. Could be enjoy certain things in your life. You love your car. And everything is about your car. Everything. As in literally somebody walks up to it and they're just looking at it and somehow they, I don't know, they touch it. And that's it. You suffer. Get the idea? I remember many years ago. This is, gosh, 20 some years ago. And uh, my teacher came to the United States and I picked it up in my new car. And that new car was a Volvo station wagon. Because growing up, I would read these road and track magazines. And, you know, they would always show this. Oh, imagine a Ferrari 
with a U-Haul, you know, like a, for some people in other countries, it's like these uh, storage places where you can rent stuff to haul your stuff. So they go, Ferrari, U-Haul equals, you know, Ferrari plus U-Haul equals Volvo station wagon. So, man, talk about advertising working on me, right? So I grew up and go, yeah, I want those things because it can go super fast and have room to put my panic healing stuff for class. Perfect. <laughs> right? They go, turbo. So anyway, so excited about it. They go, oh, finally, I got it. I pick it up, pick up my teacher from the airport, and he could probably, not probably, I'm sure he knows, like, I'm really attached to this thing, right? So I remember, got out of the car, and the first thing he says when we were at the hotel, he goes, how's your car? I said, I like it. Mm -hmm. Good. And it's been about two weeks already, by the way, you know, since I got the car, right? How do you like the car? Oh, I said, I love it. You know, it's a great car, so on, so on, so Oh, how do you like your car? I mean... I'm thinking, he just asked me that question 30 seconds ago. He heard me, he replied to it. Why is he asking the same question? So I said, Master, it's good, I like it. And he asked it again. I'm going, at some point, I'm looking at myself internally, go, you dumbass. The teacher started teaching something. <laughs> so I remember I said, uh, before I answered, I opened my big mouth, I thought about it, I go, I said, I like the car. Hmm. How long have you had it? Two weeks. And when the teacher says and, you know he's searching your soul. <laughs> okay? He goes, and? Come to think of it, Master, it's a car. I like it. It's wonderful. It's great. I've had it for two weeks. It's a car. He just smiled and walked away. Teaching lesson learned. <laughs> right? And I look back at that time and I go, he was teaching me that could to enjoy your life. Enjoy your car, enjoy this, but learn to what? The attach. And when I read this story, this uh, Zen story, that last part, it just touched me. Hmm, great tea. But this cup is already broken. So, he knows how to enjoy the tea. He knows the beautiful vessel that's housing his sacred tea. But in the end, just a cup. I'm sharing this with you because a lot of us have been trained growing up you know, to achieve, which I'll be the first person to tell you. Go after your dreams. Go for it full force. Don't let anything stop you. I know I'm supposed to be a spiritual teacher, but hey, even in spirituality, you have to reach the highest pinnacle if you can. There's no room for second place. I mean, that's the way, anyway, that's how I think. At the same time, what I've learned from my teacher is, that's good, that's great. You want to have the best car, best house, best this, best that, but all of that will fade away one day when you leave your body. What's left is your spiritual development, your oneness with God the love you have for the people around you, the souls that you interact with, the souls you have touched, that is what you get to keep with you for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. Now you go, oh, I don't believe in different lifetimes, there's only one. Then it's even more important, don't get stuck with something you can take with you, dummy. <laughs> right? Because I'm going to have people say, yeah, but you know, that's your belief, I don't believe in coming back. And okay then, then the more you got the one, don't screw it up. You get attached to something you can take with you, you're totally screwed. So either way, whether you believe it, you're coming back or not, it's just smart to enjoy your life, do the best you can, and realize you can take it with you. Done. So that's how you get to enjoy life, get to have fun, get to make the most of it, to get to accomplish. But in the end, you say, that's a good lifetime. That's a good incarnation. Okay. That's not finished. Go to the higher worlds, you know, whatever way you want, you want to perceive it. You know, we talk about achieving oneness with your higher soul. Okay. Well, guess what? In being one with your higher soul, the only thing you can take with you are the lessons you learned in the earthly life. And if this is not one of the lessons, <clears throat> well, there's going to be suffering. Because your identity 
before you leave your body is the sum total of all the things you acquired and who you think you are because of all these things. <clears throat> Can't let go. So even after you drop the body, what ordinary people call dying, the soul will suffer in the emotional world, in the astral world. Because in the emotional world, that's the world of feelings. That's the world of emotions. And if you think that you're emotionally attached to something while you're in the body, well, death is only because you drop the physical vehicle. The soul is fully conscious of all its wants, needs, and desires, especially in the emotional world. It's cranked up at least a hundred times. Let me put it another way. Let's say you love ice cream. Mm. Right now, if you want to, you can walk over and go somewhere and satisfy that desire. Yes? Mm. So how many of those desires do you think we have in a lifetime? Countless ones, right? Some of them stay. Most of them stay. Some of them dissipate. So when you drop your body, and we'll talk about this in Achieving Oneness with the Higher Soul next week, uh, this weekend, if you're part of the class. If not, I'll just cover as, as much as I can. Just imagine you're now, your consciousness is in the emotional world, in the world of desire and feelings. So whatever little desire you have are suddenly magnified a hundred times or more and you're aware of it all at the same time. Imagine you love ice cream, you love this, you, all of it at the same time. With one major difference. With no way to satisfy any of them. That's what you call hell. Right? So, some of you heard me talk about this before. After a person drops the body, the next world, the emotional world, <clears throat> for some, is purgatory, like in the Catholic tradition, or it could be hell. The word purgatory comes from the word to purge. In other words, it's an opportunity for the soul to drop all these attachments, these emotional desires, attachments, perceptions, drop it because... In order to go to the higher worlds, just like some planes, no carry-ons allowed. You cannot carry something from a lower world to a higher world. That's why the body has to die or be dropped off by the soul to go to the emotional world. And to go to the mental world, you cannot take any of these lower emotions to the, to the mental world. So you have to drop them. Well, guess what? If a person is in the earthly life is so emotionally attached to something, after they drop the body, those emotional frequencies are now magnified gajillion times, right? You're now in the emotional world. Now you have more stuff to purge out before you can go to the higher worlds. So for people who don't have as much, it's purgatory, a time of just, but for people who have so many attachments and addictions, and you think you're having withdrawals while you're in your earthly life from that drug, from that smoking, from that whatever, if you think that's bad, you have no clue what suffering is about until you drop the body. And then when all those desires crank up so hard, so much, with no way to satisfy it. Translation, we create our own hell. We don't need extra help from someone with horns and a pitchfork. We do it. We do a PhD job ourselves. Now, most people don't like to hear it because that means we have to take responsibility. And if you want to turn me off, bye, have a good life. <laughs> I could care less. Because if I don't speak it like this, some of you will not realize that, wait, yeah, it's true, I'm being too attached to something. I'm being too emotionally whatever, that addiction to that smoke, to that whatever, they don't realize that, yeah, you might think you're satisfying, you're creating a bigger hell for yourself. You don't have to listen to me. Hey, I could be completely wrong. And so are like, you know, all the great spiritual teachers. I'm just learning it from those guys. Sorry, I mean, say guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the smart thing to do to have the best of both worlds is as simple as this. Know the value of something in your earthly life. Enjoy it. Make the most of it. Nice cup. Water for hydration. That's wonderful. Okay, that's that. Oh, nice house. Great. It's good to be comfortable. 
Nice car, nice this, good relation, all these. But all these are temporary. The only thing you get to keep is who you are. Once you come up with that congruency within you, peace comes naturally. Because at some point, as the Lord Buddha said, everything is subject to change. So when things change and people, things don't go your way, it might be painful at that time, but eh, everything is subject to change. Your expectation is now different. As we said before, over and over again, and you're probably so tired of hearing it, if we see you again in the next few lifetimes, I'm going to be saying the same darn thing. Every thought, every desire is created by the eye, including the expectations. Including the attachments. Those are all creations of the soul. So if you can step back and realize that all these are just my creations, that's your first step in getting rid of that addiction, that obsessive desire, the thing that drives you crazy. All of us have, right? Don't you notice? If you're able to step back at some point and go, oh, maybe that's not that important. It's just like this pandemic thing put a little pause in a lot of people's lives and some people, it's a reset. And you get to realize, wow, I've been like a, a mouse on the wheel. And then when this thing happened and there was a lockdown for so many months and almost a year and a half and some places are still going back, whatever, you get to realize, you know, there's certain things I am able to live without and I'm perfectly fine. I have been drunk. I'm stopping by a coffee shop every morning drinking that coffee and thought that if I don't have it, I'll go crazy. Well, I noticed since the lockdown, I've been had less than once a week and I'm not dead. Hmm. <laughs> Get idea, and then some of you read the book called The Latte Factor, if I'm not mistaken, where people spend I don't know five six bucks each, you know, at least in American dollars, for every time they get coffee. If they were to cut it down by half or remove it, they're able to save X amount of dollars properly invested over a period of time. They could be a millionaire <laughs> from just reducing the cup, the five dollar cup of coffee they buy. And for some of you, because of this so-called pandemic lockdown and not being able to do stuff, there are certain things you've been spending on, certain things that you've been attached to that you didn't have a choice, you have to let it go. And guess what? You're not dead. Then you get to realize, wow, I feel free. Now imagine extending that to every part of your life. What would life be like? You get to enjoy life because now you choose to enjoy that life. You get to choose, okay, this smoke is not good for me. That drinking is not good for me. I haven't been able to stay away from so long. I don't need it because I'm the soul. Any desire I have for these things is something I created. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. The heaven you create. It's a metaphor. The heaven you create doesn't have to be after you leave your body. You can have little glimpses of heaven while you're still in the body. You can also create the purgatory and the hell for an extended time by not recognizing that you have control over your thoughts and your emotions. That's it. Very simple. So when I was reading that Zen master story, it really got me thinking, you know? Gratitude, first one. Second one, learn to enjoy the little mundane, thing, mundane things in life. They're good. But as much as you enjoy it, understand it for what it is, it's temporary. Symbolized by the cup being broken. Right? And he says it, it's broken, even though it hasn't happened. So when it actually did break, he says, okay, let's start the lesson. He starts sweeping it, and okay, let's continue. Not even a blip on his radar. He's like, mm, whatever. Go on with life. When things don't go, don't go your way, just move on. How many times have you heard me say that? Learn to move on. Yeah, but you know, she didn't smile at me today. Okay, well, all right. Maybe something's gone in her life. Move on. 
Wow, that person insulted me. Well, anyway, as long as I still don't accept it, it's not my problem. Move on. Of course, if you need to deal with it, you deal with it, okay? I'm not saying that you just ignore it. I mean, if certain things need to be done, you do it other way to go, okay, this person was disrespectful. I have to say something, otherwise that person will continue. You say it what you need to say, fix it, or do whatever you need to do, and move on. The mistake would be, yeah, I told him off. And then afterwards, for the next 20 people you talk to, yeah, can you believe this guy is this, this guy is that? Well, guess what? You're creating your own suffering because you were not able to what? Let go. Simple. I know some of you are saying it's easier said than done. I never said it's easy. But it's definitely simple. The only thing that's left is awareness. Being aware, hey, I'm getting very attached. I'm very attached to that car, to that this, to that that. And that's why I remember that's I told you the story. Message asked me a few times. How's your car? It's like, I just told you it's fine. <laughs> Didn't you hear me? How's your car? How do you like it? He was trying to use the questioning method to slap some reality into me. He's like, it's just a car. <laughs> and that was a deep lesson for me. I hope it is for you. Let's meditate. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, thank you for the blessings. To my teacher, Master Chokok Sui Mahagu Jumei, thank you for your blessings, for your love, your light, your guidance, help, healing, protection. Thank you. In full faith, so be it. All right. Gently tap a crown. I am that. I am. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion. not the thoughts. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, divine power. I am that. The soul, the spiritual self. I am connected in one to my higher soul. <clears throat> I am connected in one to the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There is only oneness. Now just be still. We'll do something slightly different tonight. Be aware of your crown. Be aware of a few inches above your crown. Just like we do in Meditation Twin Hearts, imagine a golden star above your crown. Allow your awareness to just drift higher, or like a balloon, just float higher and higher into that golden light. Allow your attention to just be that golden light. And just say silently, I am that. I am that. Now just follow silently. Repeat this silently as your complete attention is on that golden light. I am the spiritual self. I am not the body. I am the spiritual self. I am not any of my emotions or feelings. I am the spiritual self. I am not the mind. I'm not my thoughts. I am the spiritual self. Be still. Again, I am the spiritual self. I'm not the body. I am the spiritual self. I'm not any of my feelings or emotions. I am the spiritual self. I'm not my thoughts or my mind. I am that. That, the spiritual self, am I. Be still.
Now this time just listen. You're listening from within that golden light. I am the spiritual self. I am that. That am I. I am that spiritual self. That self am I. I am that spiritual self. That self am I. I am that spiritual self. That self am I. Be still. I am the spiritual self, the Atma, the soul. I am that. That am I. I am that, the Atma, the spiritual self. That Atma am I. Be still. The spiritual self in me, the Atma, is one with the spiritual self in all, the Param Atma. The spiritual self in me, the Atma, is one with the spiritual self in all, the Param Atma. The Atma in me is one with the Param Atma in all. The Atma in me is one with the Param Atma in all. The spiritual self in me is one with the universal spiritual self in all. I am that. That. M. I. Be still and let go. Now. Allow yourself to experience who you really are, the true spiritual self that is one with the spiritual self in all. Be still.
gently, slowly, very gently and slowly, come back to your physical body, just take your time, gently and slowly slide back into your physical body right now, just gently move your hands and fingers, that helps, wiggle your toes a little bit, this allows you to slide back slowly. Okay, now raise your hands. Just imagine all the people you love in front of you. Fill them all with beautiful golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with prosperity, and with spirituality. So be it. Let that golden light spread to your relatives and your friends and the people you work with. Just say blessings be to all, so be it. Now be aware of your feet, the base of your spine, your hands, project golden light down into the earth and verbally repeat after me. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. And all of creation so be it so be it and so it is let's give thanks to the divine supreme god divine father mother thank you to all the spiritual elders holy masters saints archangels holy angels and spiritual helpers to my beloved teacher master chokoksui mahaguju may thank you for your immense blessings guidance help and protection so be it in full faith and so it is okay so how was your meditation You might have noticed we kind of add some secret sauce, just crank up the frequency. And I know some of you usually say, oh, I didn't want to come back. Well, what you meant is you didn't feel like coming back to your physical consciousness. You went to where you really are. <laughs> you speak yourself. Okay? If you must know, you were out. The silence was about five minutes. No, four, maybe four minutes. Wow, that's four minutes. I can't even stop yakking when I'm with people for more than a minute. My mind goes all over the place. Exactly the point. Because at that time, your body, your emotions, and thoughts were the boss. During meditation, you're reclaiming that power of who you really are. So you can do this meditation as often as you like. I'm not deleting it. It's there. You can share with people, especially the people who worry a lot, cannot get through, and then they bug you for every little thing, and they cannot move on. Well, I hope this little lecture about the... You know, crystal goblet, crystal cup helps. And <clears throat> when you do the meditation, this meditation, if you want to, if there's certain obsessions that you you have, with whatever, why don't you try it this way? Before the meditation, again, you can replay this at any time. You go, okay, I want to get rid of this, 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 and this. I want to let go of attachment to this. Do the meditation and really affirm who you are. 99.999% of the time, when you come back, you go, who needs that? Try it with anything like smoking, drinking, or whatever addiction you have. Try it. See what it see what happens. You might be shocked how powerful the eye really is in dealing with everyday life. And how much am I charging you for this? Nothing. <laughs> so if you still don't do it, <laughs> you're the problem. <laughs> I mean, just press a button. I mean, maybe if I charge you a gajillion dollars, you'll do it. <laughs> but then again, there's so many people who could use the teaching who will value it, then they're at a loss. So, okay, that's so why we're not charging you. <laughs> anyway, we will see you on Wednesday morning, <clears throat> 10 a.m. for Anchor the Light. Uh, we're doing this twice a week. No, I'm sorry, twice a day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Friday is Healing Day. And I just want to let you know ahead of time, this Friday is full moon. Okay? So, Friday, 6 o'clock, is full moon meditation. And the topic is... Do you need a spiritual teacher or a spiritual coach? That's 6 p.m. All right? And it's a very powerful full moon. Well, all of them are. And just for you geek, geeks out there, well, how is the full moon so powerful? Actually, it's not because of the moon. It's because of the sun. Everything gets magnified during the full moon. So, for example, if this is the sun, this is the earth, this is the moon. So when you say full moon, that means it's all aligned. All right? 
So what happens is the gravitational pull of the <laughs> of the, the moon is pulling on you, and since the sun is aligned to it, it magnifies it. That's why, at least on the physics side. On the spiritual side, many more things are happening. But that's one reason why you have this thing called werewolf syndrome. It's the full moon. How come I feel homicidal or crazy? That's why. Because the seed was already there. It just what poured fertilized. Now, the opposite is also true. When you do things to purify your negative thoughts, negative emotions, that's magnified. When you want to awaken certain qualities within you of love, compassion, intuition, whatever it is, during the full moon, you also take advantage of that magnifying effect. That's it. So, all right, that's just giving you a heads up. That's this coming Friday. Um, so this same time we're doing Anchor the Light, it's going to be a full moon meditation. That's it. Namaste, everyone. You all take care, and thank you very much for leaving your comments, and um, we'll see you then. Oh, Wednesday first. Take good care. Bye.